It's Karina, your virtual health coach. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Today's topic is sweeteners. What are the best sweeteners? What are the worst sweeteners? Uh, but before we get started, please let me know what is your favorite type of sweet? I have a couple of sodas here we're gonna take a look at. Um, are you a soda person? Are you somebody who um, likes to eat candy throughout the day? Or maybe you're more into pastries, cookies, and things like that. Uh, but definitely let me know. Heck, maybe you love all of them. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the absolute worst of the worst in terms of your waistline and your overall health is going to be the artificial sweeteners. So that's the little babies in the pastel colored packets when you go out to a restaurant. Uh, we have things like Sweet and Low, Equal. Uh, there are several different artificial sweeteners out there. Now, what you need to understand is that the artificial sweeteners are going to um, almost trick your brain, right? So sugar, when we ingest it, um, it sends messages to your brain telling it that you just took in a lot of sugar and then it needs to release insulin so that that sugar can be transported throughout the body so that it can be used up. So artificial sweeteners, because they're kind of triggering this response in your brain, telling it that you're having sugar, but then you're not actually having any real sugar or glucose added to your bloodstream. Uh, this is a very, you know, kind of confusing uh, thing that it's doing to the body. And now they're actually finding that artificial sweeteners cause people to crave more sugar and actually cause people to overeat, right? They've actually done studies where uh, people who are taking in artificial sweeteners actually end up eating more calories um, at the subsequent meals. So artificial sweeteners, while they in theory are giving you the sweetness without the calories, understand that the cost is far higher uh, than the gain in that respect. Um, in addition to the fact that they're actually going to cause you to crave more sugar and can even cause you to overeat, they're also have been found to have um, neurotoxic effects, which means they kill your brain cells. Um, and certain people will have different uh, levels of sensitivity to these things. Um, but certainly something to think about. Um, and for me, it is the reason why I do everything I can to avoid official sweeteners, artificial sweeteners. Uh, literally, artificial sweeteners are probably like the one thing that I absolutely will not eat. Um, so with that said, we can look at a couple examples. We've got Diet Coke, one of the probably uh, most common examples. You also need to understand that things like Slim Fast and other diet beverages or light beverages or light foods are also going to contain artificial sweeteners. So the things to look for on the ingredient label uh, are the words sucralose, acesulfame potassium uh, is another one, and of course aspartame. But what you'll find is that more and more companies are removing the aspartame from their products because they know that people are catching on to how dangerous this stuff is. Um, and they may even proclaim on the label, no aspartame. Um, but you're smarter than that, right? You're not going to let them dupe you. Uh, and you're going to know that your sucralose, your acesulfame potassium, this is the exact same thing. And you want to avoid those artificial sweeteners as well. So now we'll move on to the next sweetener, which is high fructose corn syrup. Now this is still a very, very unhealthy sweetener, okay? But I literally would prefer you eating high fructose corn syrup and refined sugar than having artificial sweeteners. That is how bad they are. All right, but let's talk about high fructose corn syrup. And I have a couple examples here. We've got a Powerade, which is something that people drink while they're working out. Um, and the second ingredient after water is high fructose corn syrup. Um, and then of course, Coca-Cola, which we also know um, here in the US is sweetened with corn syrup. Of course, there are still some places where you can have uh, sugar sweetened sodas. Um, so yes, I think a sugar sweetened soda would actually be better for you than this high fructose corn syrup one. So let's talk a little bit about why high fructose corn syrup um, is so bad for us and why it is such a causative factor for weight gain. Uh, so if you think about a kernel of corn, 
Um, there's a certain amount of starch and sugar that's contained in that corn. And when you eat corn on the cob or something like that, you can taste some of that sweetness. So what they've done is actually taken the sweetness out of the corn and refined it into this uh, high fructose corn syrup, right? So there's a couple of problems with this. Number one, it's a very highly processed food, right? There's no high fructose corn syrup growing out of the ground or flowing in a river, right? This is made in a factory. This is not something that is ever going to be found naturally um, in the environment. Um, of course, corn itself is a real food, a natural food. And when you eat the entire piece of corn, right, you get a lot of health benefits, you get a lot of fiber. Um, and so it's not that the sugar in the corn is bad, it's that processing and refining of the sugar from the corn that makes it so harmful. So now what you're ingesting is a greater amount of sugar than would ever be present in nature right? Uh, just eating a piece of corn or even eating a really sweet fruit is not going to contain the same amount of sugar as this high fructose corn syrup. And because it's actually sweeter than sugar and cheaper because corn is subsidized, um, corn is a very, very common crop, a very cheap crop. Uh, so we see high fructose corn syrup in more and more different products. Uh, but this is definitely something you, that you want to avoid. It's going to cause that big blood sugar spike. It's going to cause weight gain. It's also going to um, just in general contribute to more and more sugar cravings. Um, as you have higher concentrations of sugar and you're ingesting more and more sugar uh, per gram, such as something like this highly sweetened syrup, it's actually going to cause you to crave more sugar in the future. So I would actually prefer you just go and eat the corn on the cob um, or to actually use refined sugar, white sugar, uh, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. Okay, so sugar. When you see it on the ingredient label, it'll just say sugar. But when you hear me talk about white sugar or refined sugar, that's what I'm talking about, all right? Just the typical white sugar that you find um, on ingredient labels or in these handy dandy little packets when you go out to restaurants. So again, we have a very highly processed and refined product. So kind of the same way that we were talking about uh, with the corn syrup, they're taking the sugar out of the plant and refining it down. This is kind of what they do uh, when they're making cocaine, right? We have a coca leaf, and then they're actually going to concentrate down uh, the chemicals that are going to elicit the, response, the desired response. And once you have this refined product, it becomes a controlled substance, becomes cocaine. So this is the same process that we're doing to turn a sugar beet or sugar cane into white sugar, refining it down. And once we do this process of concentrating it down, we have something that, number one, is going to be, again, far more sugar than you would ever ingest in nature, just eating natural foods. You have something that's going to cause a very large spike or increase in your blood sugar level very quickly. This means that your body's going into fat storage mode, you're going to be storing fat, gaining fat, all right, from eating that much sugar. Um, and it's also going to cause you to get hungry a lot sooner and to even potentially uh, become irritable, become, you know, just agitated, uh, what we call the sugar crash, right? That's when our blood sugar level is plummeting back down after we take in a whole lot of sugar. So, Again, uh, you'll find added sugar in just about everything from pasta sauce to salad dressings. Um, and then we also have, you know, certain sodas will still be made with sugar. I do think that this is a better option than the high fructose corn syrup. Um, high fructose corn syrup promotes itself as being sweeter than sugar. Um, but refined sugar is definitely something that we want to avoid. And then another reason to avoid refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup is that there's a very high potential for these foods to be genetically modified. Now, GMOs, that could be another topic for a whole other video. But what you need to understand is that they're taking the genetic material from two different organisms, 
right? So it's not selective breeding. It's not um, having two p- plants breed together to have a certain effect. It's literally taking the genetic material out of one species or organism and putting it in another. And most commonly, they're taking bacterial DNA, putting it in plants so that those plants can be uh, what they call Roundup ready or Roundup resistance. This is so that they can be sprayed with herbicides. Um, And glyphosate, which is the active herbicide in Roundup, has its own whole slew of negative health effects. So just having an intention to try and avoid GMOs um, is another good reason to avoid uh, both regular sugar and high fructose corn syrup. So to make a small step in the right direction would be to have an organic uh, sugar, right? So if something is organic, then you know that it is uh, not grown with genetically modified uh, techniques or it's a non-GMO food. So here's a great example here, certified organic pure cane sugar. Now, this is still going to have the same amount of sugar, right, as our regular sugar, but it is certainly a step in the right direction and a bit less toxic uh, than the typical sugar that we are typically eating. But what about the sweeteners that you can eat? Let's go ahead and start talking about what the healthiest options of sweeteners would be. So just as we were talking about how High fructose corn syrup and white sugar are highly processed, refined food-like substances. Uh, And those things are very bad for us because they're unnatural, because they've been highly processed and refined. Uh, The healthy sweeteners are going to be things that are natural foods as close to their natural state as possible. Um, So... uh, Some examples, okay, would be things like honey, all right? And what I have here um, is is an organic raw honey. This is a local honey made right here in Austin. Um, When you are consuming a source of sweetness that comes from a natural food source, like honey or eating a piece of fruit, you're getting a lot of different benefits that you literally just don't get at all when you have refined sugar. So number one, the amount of sugar that you're getting is something that your body can handle, right? Just the consideration alone of the amount of sugar that you're consuming um, is going to be a much more balanced uh, in natural foods. Whereas when you have the high fructose corn syrup or you have the refined sugar, here you're taking in more sugar than your body knows how to deal with. Um, So that's the first consideration. Secondly, is that when you consume sugar from natural sources, you get a great amount of other nutrients in addition to that sweetness, the fructose um, in the case of uh, fruit sugar or glucose, right? So when we eat things from natural food sources, we get um, things like minerals, In the case of honey, maple syrup is another great example of something that gives us a lot of minerals. Uh, We're also going to get antioxidants in the case of fruit. When we talk about eating these natural foods, they're usually going to contain fiber as well. Um, And when you have the fiber in conjunction with the sugar, it decreases the glycemic index of the food. And that's just a fancy-smancy way of saying that it's going to give you a less severe spike in your blood sugar. It's not going to elevate your blood sugar levels as quickly. So this means it's a lot easier for your body to handle that amount of sugar. It's going to be less likely that you're going to uh, be able to consume as much, um, sorry, enough sugar to store a lot of excessive fat. Um, your body knows how to digest natural foods. So the more that you can opt for natural sweeteners, uh, the more likely your body's going to be able to handle that um, and not have an adverse reaction to it. Uh, So a couple things that I can point out. Coconut water is probably one of my absolute favorite, um, favorite things to consume. Something that, man, I probably spend way too much money on. But anyhow, what's cool about coconut water is that it's going to contain the natural sugars that are present in the coconut. 
Um, so again, we have something that is not a refined or man-made sugar. It's just the natural sugar that's present in the food. Uh, we also get a lot of electrolytes from coconut water. So this is a great replacement um, for those sports drink type beverages, like the Powerade we looked at earlier. This guy, not only does it have you know high fructose corn syrup as the second ingredient, uh, but it also has all kinds of artificial colors and brominated vegetable oil and just things that um, I definitely recommend you avoid. And I have videos on those topics if you want to find out what those things are brominated vegetable oil. Um, so uh, coconut water, excellent choice. The one thing I want to say about fruit juice is that while it is definitely, definitely a better option than sodas, it's not nearly as healthy for you as if you actually ate the fruit itself um, and ate the whole piece of fruit. I'm not telling you you have to eat the apple core or the banana peel. I'm just talking about eating the fruit versus drinking the juice. Um, and that's because when they just have the juice, you lose the fiber, right? And you also lose a lot of the other nutrients and antioxidants that would normally be present in the fruit if you ate it. Um, but really the biggest detriment is that a fruit juice ends up being you know, a highly concentrated source of sugar. So uh, again, definitely a better option than a soda, but definitely something that you should avoid um, if you're trying to lose weight and if you really want to have optimal health um, and optimal blood sugar metabolism. So fresh organic fruit is going to be the most healthful type of fruit you can eat, um, but frozen fruit or dried fruit um, are certainly options, and a lot of times they can be more practical. Um, I just want to encourage you to glance at your nutrition label anytime you are purchasing some kind of uh, of sweet, really of any kind. Again, you want to look for those artificial sweeteners. You want to look for any added sugar or high fructose corn syrup. You know, and that honestly goes um, for coconut waters as well. There are several coconut waters on the market that once you look at the ingredients, they have added sugar, they have artificial flavors. Um, you really want to look for something and make sure that it says, you know, like 100% coconut water. Should not have a bunch of other crazy ingredients. Um, so here I have some dried fruit that, again, would be a great example. Um, and they actually tell you right here on the label, 100% real fruit, 100% uh, fat-free, which most fruit is anyway. Um, although there are some dried fruit type things out there where they're adding oils or something. So you do need to look for that. Uh, no sugar added, right? That's what we want to look for. Um, this one is gluten-free. This one is also non-GMO certified, which is great. So even though it's not organic, um, it does have that non-GMO certification. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. And then looking at this ingredient list, we have freeze-dried pineapple and guava. Super simple. That's what you want to look for. Just as a great general guideline in health and nutrition is looking for things that are incredibly simple, especially when you flip over and look at that ingredient list. Um, so this little bag of dried fruit here, it says three servings of fruit in this bag. What an awesome snack. Definitely, you know, significantly healthier than any... Pff, any kind of candy or candy bar you could eat. Um, and again, there's certain health benefits and nutrients that you're going to get when you have fruit as your dessert and use fruit to satisfy your sweet tooth. So on the topic of natural sweeteners, we also have a lot of products uh, like agave nectar, coconut sugar, and stevia that are uh, becoming more widely available. So again, I encourage you to just kind of exercise that simple guideline, looking for something that is as close to its natural state as possible. So when we think about coconut sugar and we think about agave nectar, these are still processed foods. And from this perspective of wanting to prioritize things in their natural state, uh, the agave nectar and coconut sugar products would kind of not qualify, right? Because they are processed foods. Um, so when we're talking about stevia, this is an excellent way to sweeten things. This is an herbal sweetener. Uh, so this is something that's very natural. Um, but a lot of the stevia, um, drops or stevia sugar packets out there, again, are processed. 
So as you're looking at these different sweeteners, you can look for things um, like raw, uh, raw stevia as an example, um, raw like we see on this honey. That's going to tell you that something is in as close to its natural state as possible. You can also look at the glycemic index of different sweeteners to get a gauge of how much of a blood sugar spike those sweeteners are going to cause. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, I prefer to just go with this approach, prioritizing natural sweeteners, foods that are in as close to their natural state as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you liked it. I hope that you will leave me your feedback below, either letting me know your favorite type of sweet, um, or if you have any questions or topic requests after hearing this video, I have always love to hear from you. You can learn more about me and my health coaching practice at KarinaRachel.com. I do hope that you will subscribe to Psyche Truth if you aren't already, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.